Daniel, can you come home early tonight? I have something important to talk to you about. Huh? Something important? I have a business dinner scheduled with my client tonight. Can you not reschedule? Um, I would like to avoid that. I mean a very important client. What is it about? Should I tell you no? I don't think it's best for you to hear this during work. You're scaring me now. But now I have to know, so yes. Okay. Long story short, I want a divorce. What? A divorce? Nice try, but April Fool's a little while ago. I'm not joking. I want a divorce. We need to part ways. Wait a second. Did I do something? I don't get it. I just don't want to live with you anymore. I don't want to drag on the life I dislike any longer. So I need to restart. Trisha, what's going on? Did something happen? No, nothing in particular. I just don't want to be with you anymore. I'm asking what's making you feel that way. I don't understand. Uh, there was a decent reason you want a divorce, right? To not want to be with you is not a good enough reason. I'm asking why? What about Alice? Have you forgotten we have a daughter? You need to be clear. A reason? Well, I can give you a couple. But I guess the biggest reason is that the life I live with you doesn't make me happy anymore. You work, you're nice. I think you're a good dad. But as a man, you're not attractive. I think you're boring. Boring? You want a divorce because I'm boring? I don't feel any joy when I'm with you. In fact, it stresses me when you're at home at the weekends. I don't want you around. So you don't like me anymore? I guess not. It's been 15 years since we got married. So perhaps it's inevitable that I don't have feelings for you anymore. I still love you, Trisha. Oh God, stop it. I don't even want you to say that to me anymore. It makes me sick. If we don't break it now, I'm going to start to hate you. So it's better if we get a divorce sooner, before I start hating my daughter's father. Isn't there something we can do to fix it? If you want me to change, I will. You know what? I'm canceling tonight's dinner. I'll come home, so let's talk it through, okay? No, I don't need to talk about anything. My decision is made. I finally told you after thinking it through. I'm way past the phase of trying to fix things together. Trisha, please! You have to give me a chance! I will do anything! No, it's over. I'm done with you. As a kind gesture, I'm telling you this directly and not through a lawyer. The only thing left is for you to sign the divorce papers I've prepared and to discuss Alice's custody, that's all. How are you gonna explain to Alice? She's in high school. She's old enough to choose who she wants to live with. Wait, sorry, I'm still in disbelief. I don't get it. Well, I can imagine it would be hard for you to accept. But you need to understand that my mind is set and that I don't have any feelings for you. We can't amend our relationship. So please sign the papers as soon as you can. That is the only thing I ask you. Daniel, how much longer do you need to sign those papers? I need you to move on. I uh, know. If you know, then do it. We have decided what we need to. Alice made her choice to stay with me. Why is it taking you so long? I hate the thought of not living with you two anymore. You're being like a child now. I have already moved out of the house two days ago. Alice is getting ready to leave next week. Why can't you be a man and move on? Make up your mind already. That's not fair. I never wanted a divorce in the first place. I want to keep living with my daughter. Don't be such a baby. It's not like you're never seeing her again. That's not the point. Alice said she wants to start her new life with me. You better not do anything to make her think otherwise. I won't. I will respect her decision. She was pretty clear that she wants to live with you. That she didn't want to live with me anymore. Maybe Alice feels the same way I feel about you. Am I that bad? So much so that my family doesn't want to be around me anymore? See, this is what annoys me about you. You're being so indecisive and dragging this on. We have already agreed to get a divorce. I may have agreed, but I still don't understand. You suddenly tell me you don't want to be with me anymore. It was an ambush from my perspective. You need to at least give me a reason I can understand. Seriously? We have to go over this again? How many times have I told you that I don't have feelings for you anymore? That's all. It's my feelings. It's about me. So there's no point for you to try to understand. I know. Patricia, I'm sorry. 
I know you've been out a lot the past couple of months. That was because you didn't want to be with me, wasn't it? Now that I look back, I see you were giving me hints. I wish I saw it sooner. Well, I don't think I went out that much, did I? Compared to before, yes, you did. I thought that maybe you needed time away from the house. Now that Alice is in high school and you have a bit more time to yourself. But it was because of me, wasn't it? Right. Yes, it was because of you. I wish I realized sooner, before you lost your feelings for me. I'm sorry that our marriage didn't work out, and that I couldn't make you happy. Well, I don't blame it all on you. There were things I could have done better, too. So don't be so hard on yourself. Let's just move on with our lives. It is a huge decision for me. But fine, I will sign. Would you like me to get them fired at the court as well? Yes, if you can. Let me know once it's done. Okay. Trisha, thank you for everything. Hey, Alice, sir, I couldn't pick up your call. I was in a meeting at work. What's up? Did something happen? Well, kind of. Are you almost done at work? Yeah, I was getting ready to go soon. Okay, good. Um, I know this is a bit sudden, but can I come home to live with you again? Like, from today. I'm on my way to your office now. What, on your way here? And you want to live with me? I thought you wanted to live with your mom. Well, yeah. But I'm done with the revenge, so not anymore. Revenge? Yeah. I said I wanted to live with mom only for revenge. The truth is, I want to live with you. Sorry, I'm not following. Did you do something to mom? Kind of. And we're sorry for putting you in the middle of everything. And we're sorry we decided to divorce out of the blue, but it wasn't just your mom who made the decision. I agreed in the end, too. No, that's not why I wanted revenge. Hey, Dad, let me ask you before I go on. You are over mom, right? Well, yes. After all she said to me, let's just say I don't wish for us to start older. Okay, that's good. Listen, this might be a surprise, but you need to know something. Okay, what is it? Mom wanted a divorce because she was having an affair. What, an affair? Yeah. You know she brought up divorce out of nowhere. Yes, but... Uh... She never mentioned anything about someone else. Of course she wouldn't. She didn't want to make it look like she was at fault. It would only be a disadvantage for her if you found out. You trust her too much, Dad. Mom has been in an affair for the past year. I wish I didn't find out neither. But I accidentally saw her go into a motel with another man. What? What were you doing near a motel? I'm sorry. I once to lie that I was staying at a friend's house, but we actually went to this gig that this band was playing. <clears throat> I see. I'm so sorry I lied, Dad. I thought you'd say no. That's okay. So that's how you found out about Mom's affair? Yeah. Why don't you tell me sooner? You could have talked to me. I didn't have any proof. I know that you would have believed my story. But Mom is very careful of her tracks, so she could have talked her way out of it. I thought of telling you once you two were going through divorce. But you were so hurt, Dad. I felt horrible for you. Oh, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I should have been there to listen. No, no. Nothing is your fault, Dad. This is all on Mom. It must have been hard for you to be with Mom all this time. Yeah, but I feel better now. Now that I got my revenge. I think she'll contact you soon, asking to get back together. What? Alice, what did you do? Hey, I've arrived at your house now. I will give you the details later. I'll be outside of your building. Don't keep me waiting. Hi, Daniel. How are you and Alice? We are doing well. Sorry about her moving back. I may not have been the best mom for these past months. I've been busy trying to find a job, so I haven't really been there for her. You said she wants to live with me going forward. That's okay with you, right? You did say she's old enough to make her own decisions. 
Yes, she already messaged me too. She said she can't live with me anymore. I didn't realize I was such a bad mom for her. She says to change legal custody too. If that's what she wants, we should change it. Although we only have a few years left until she turns 18, but I will arrange documents. I've been thinking a lot since I moved out. About what? You know, if I should have stayed. What do you say? Do you regret getting a divorce? What if I say I do? Now that I'm on my own, I finally realize how much I've been dependent on you, Daniel. I thought I would be happy with Alice, but nothing seemed to go right. All I could think about was how great you were as a husband. Just as Alice said. <laughs> what? Your guy left you, didn't he? Huh? What are you talking about? There is no guy. Stop playing with me. Alice saw you going to a motel with another man. She saw wrong. That was not me. I had never been to a motel with someone. You can't prove anything. Yes, we can. Alice decided to live with you for a while so that she can collect evidence. You're lying. Nope. You were having an affair with your boss from your part-time job, weren't you? Better yet, he was married too. He broke off our marriage because he said that he wants to get a divorce to marry you. But then his wife found out and he dumped you instead, right? No. Which part am I wrong? He fooled me. He said we'd be together. That's the only reason why I divorced you. But then he started saying his wife and kids are more important to him. It was a fraud. Oh, so you think you're the victim? The truth is that you left me for another man. Do you think that makes me feel any better than before? No, it makes me feel worse. I was an idiot. I let that guy talk me into betraying you. And now it has all come back to bite me. I'm so sorry, Daniel. You don't have to apologize to me. It's all done and over with. What? Do you mean you forgive me? What do you think I am, stupid? No, I don't forgive you. I mean, you don't have to apologize to me verbally. Because I'm suing you. Sue me? On what grounds? We settled our divorce. You can't ask me to pay you anything. We will see about that. I've already hired a lawyer to look into this. You were not telling the truth when you made me sign those papers. So he thinks there's a good chance we can work something up. Let's sit tight and see, shall we? Wait, I'm being sued by his wife too? So what? You got your division of assets, pay from that. But then I won't be able to live. Then I advise you work. I've only had a small part-time job since we married. It's impossible for me to find a decent job at this age. Daniel, I'm sorry. I'll never cheat on you again. I'll never betray you, so please, take me back. Give me another chance. No way. You said you thought it through. You said your mind was made up. I finally see that you're the most important to me. Well, moments ago, you were head over heels about your boss. And now that he's done with you, you want me to take you back. You got some strong nerves. Please, forgive me. I should have realized how lucky I was to have a kind husband like you. I will never hurt you again. I will spend the rest of my life only for my family. Nah, you can live however you want. If you stay with a boring guy like me, you might just change your mind again. And also, Alice has not forgiven you either. She may be older now, but she still is a child. Do you realize how shocked she was when she saw you two? I will apologize to her. Can we please get back together if she forgives me? Please. That's not possible. She is sitting next to me right now, watching us sending these messages. And she says she never wants to hear from you again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was wrong about everything. I'm sorry for having an affair, and I'm sorry for ambushing you to a divorce. Please forgive me. It's too late. Way too late. You're the one who told me not to be such a baby. And you said, let's just move on with our lives, right? Afterwards, my lawyer found a way to sue my ex-wife and her boss. I knew by suing her boss, there was a possibility of him and his wife getting a divorce too. But I heard they chose to stay together because their children were still very young. In the end, Trisha lost the majority of her division of assets to pay me and his wife for her wrongdoing. Trisha, broke, tried to get help from her own parents. But Alice had already told him what happened. Furious, they didn't let Trisha set foot in their home. 
I don't know where she is now, but I haven't been contacted by authorities or anything, so I'm pretty sure she is alive. I wanted to sue her for child support, but I haven't been able to because her whereabouts are unknown. After what we went through, I am living happily with my daughter. Although it's just the two of us, we haven't had any problem from not having Trisha around. We have been managing well. We bought several new appliances to make up for the lost manpower and it's been working great. By the way, in case you were wondering what my daughter did to get revenge, she found proof that the two were having an affair and shared it with his wife. She seemed satisfied that she got what she needed to get. But after seeing all the evidence she collected, I felt horrible to have made my daughter do such things. I was completely useless from the shock of the divorce back then. If I had been stronger and smarter, perhaps I could have taken the hard role she took on. When I heard the details of her revenge, I felt so horrible that I could not help but cry from regret. She always acts cool, but deep down I know she is very hurt. So my top priority now is to provide her a safe home full of love. Alice being a teenage girl, it's hard not to be an embarrassing dad, but I will do whatever it takes to keep a smile on her face and show her that love without betrayal exists in this world. Hi, Grace. I never got the chance to thank you for all your help at our wedding. Thanks to you, it went perfect. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, and your speech was wonderful. I wish Joan's dad was with us to make the speech. If he was alive, he would have made a better one. Yours was great. My parents were very touched. The wedding was a lot more compact than I expected. Well, we both don't like to be the center of attention. So we only invited close family and kept the crowd as small as possible. A big and gorgeous stage would have been misfit, for you anyway. So I guess a compact wedding was suited for you. You're totally right. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to wear a wedding dress. But you did in the end. Yes, because my grandmother really wanted to see me in one. So I thought I'd give it a try. But I chose a very simple design. I didn't want anything too fancy. Yes, I think you chose right. Sorry to be blunt here, but you wouldn't look good in something fancy. I agree. <laughs> I was glad everyone enjoyed it, though. I never would have thought my son would choose someone like you. Oh, <laughs> I know, me neither. He's very handsome, which he must have gotten from you. Anybody would assume he'd choose someone pretty. All of his exes were very pretty. He even dated a girl who won a beauty trophy. Oh, I'm not surprised. Good-looking people must attract other good-looking people. I wish I could be a part of that. The reason why he became attracted to you is probably because of that positivity of yours. I think so. He said he becomes more lively when I'm with him. Oh, I forgot to mention that next month there's a big family gathering. Why don't you two come? Nice! Are we celebrating something? Yes, there's a family member who's turning a hundred years old. She's Joan's grandfather's sister, which makes her Joan's great-aunt. Wow, a great-aunt? I did meet John's grandfather at our wedding. He is a very fashionable gentleman. He has seven siblings. The eldest is turning one hundred. What is John's grandfather's birth order? The last? That's why the two are quite far apart in age. I bet! Anyway, we have a banquet room booked at a hotel for the celebration. A banquet room? Wow! You should come and say hello. Most of the family weren't invited to the wedding, so you haven't had the chance to meet them. This would be a great opportunity. I agree! I'll check the date with John. Just to confirm, are you sure I'm invited? I will let the host know. Everyone should be aware that John got married, so I'm sure it won't be a problem. Oh, thank you. I look forward to seeing everyone. Good. I hope you get along with everyone. How was the gathering for you last night? You seemed quite nervous. Good morning. Oh, yes, I was very nervous to meet everyone. And I was astonished. How come everyone in the family is so good looking? I know. I was surprised when I joined the family as well. Everyone has a very pretty face. It made my heart race. I felt completely out of place. You would actually stand out among such good-looking people. As in, a bad way. I think I kinda did. Makes you lose your confidence, doesn't it? You must have felt alien, or even miserable. Maybe... 
Do you regret that you got married into this family? I mean, I was a little embarrassed. But I didn't feel alien. You don't have to act strong. I'm sure. Because everyone was so nice to me. The younger member of the family went out for more drinks afterwards. We all became good friends. We were calling each other by nicknames by the end of the night. Or should I say, by the morning? <laughs> we stayed out so long, I just woke up. Huh? You became that close with them? With my family? Yes, we exchanged contacts and everything. We also created a group chat. I'm so glad you asked me to join the gathering. That's not right. Uh, beg your pardon? That's not right. Why did you get close to them? What? Grace, what's wrong? You do not fit in the family. A decent person would realize and want to divorce. How the hell can you not see someone as ugly as you don't belong? Ugly? I'm referring to you. Why is my son married to such a pig? You're not welcomed. Oh, Grace, calm down. How did you do it? Huh? I'm asking you how you tricked my son to marry you. Surely you had to. Do you have something on him? What? No. We're together because we fell in love. I had never tricked him. How could I have that kind of technique? My experience with men are so limited. I don't believe you. That can't be. Who would fall in love with a person like you? You're ugly. You give me chills. What did you do to marry John? I refuse to accept you as my daughter-in-law. Wow. So the truth comes out. I didn't know you thought of me that way. I mean, I did know that you always kept your distance. But I see now that you never liked me. When first John introduced you to me, I was so shocked that I nearly fainted. I couldn't help but wonder if John was having issues with his vision. I do realize that my appearance is far from attractive, but... John loves me for who I am inside. If you knew that, you're unattractive. How can you allow yourself to be with John? Get a divorce. I don't want to do that. You might not believe this, but we are very happy together. Everyone in the family said that John seems much happier than before. You heard them too, didn't you? That's only because he's still excited about being a newlywed. It will die down in a matter of time. Then he will deeply regret he married an ugly person like you. Oh, well, I don't know. I am. He'll regret it for sure. If John doesn't want a divorce now, so be it. For now, though. You must be perfect at housekeeping. You're not good enough to be his wife, so at least be sure to take care of all the chores. That's the only thing you can provide him. Housekeeping? Duh. That's the least you can do. Okay. Um... I'm not very good at housekeeping, but I'll do my best. Um, excuse me? Hi, Grace, what is it? Is something wrong? Yes, something is very wrong. I heard from John's cousin. Is it true that you're making John cook? Oh, that. Have you forgotten what I said to you? An ugly pig like you making my son do chores? It's unbelievable. We help each other with chores since we both work. Surely I can't manage everything on my own. That's your responsibility. My poor baby, get a divorce, now. He comes home tired from work and you make him go through all that? The wife should take care of all the chores. Why are you working anyway? You should be a full-time housewife and support your husband. Actually, truth be told, John is the full-time homemaker now. Excuse me? John stays at home as the homemaker, and I go out to work as the breadwinner. What are you talking about? You're talking gibberish? John is a sales executive at a trading firm. But he actually became sick from overworking. So he left the firm when we got married. That's why he cooks dinner and does other house chores. What? Why have I not heard about this? This is very significant news. I don't understand why this was kept from me. Probably because he didn't want to tell you. I mean, your reaction is imaginable. You would say something like, Be a man, blah blah. Your ideology is so biased and outdated. I beg your pardon? Well, John's actions speak the truth, right? He hasn't told you, so he must not trust you. What do you know about my son? Don't you speak like you know everything. 
John has sometimes spoken about you, and they were mostly negative. What? How so? That you were a lazy, stay-at-home mom. You never worked and yet spent so much of what your husband had earned without even doing any house chores. And that you were an arrogant, unlikable person. John said that? Yes, he did to me. So I think that John may not like you that much, Grace. That can be. You're lying to me. You're lying to me about everything, including that you're the breadwinner. You're trying to deceive me. No, it's the truth. I am in a directive position of an international firm. I make plenty to pay for the both of us. That's not reason enough for my son to be a homemaker. John didn't like working in an organization. He really hated his environment where he had to show up at this office every day. He worked for his living, but one day his heart couldn't tolerate it anymore. There was even a time when he physically could not take a step forward while he was headed to his office. It was that bad for him? Yes, it was. When I first met him, he was not in a good condition. We became close because I was giving him advice about work. Once we started dating, we realized that we were a good fit because we kind of supplemented each other. So, we got married and agreed that John would be the homemaker. That's why he chose you? The current lifestyle suits him. He seems much happier nowadays. You, a director at an international firm? Do you think I can actually believe that? I don't mean to boast or anything, but I am really good at what I do. My professional background helped me hit it off with your family too, you know? What do you mean? Remember the family gathering you invited me to the other day? Well, a few of us began to talk about work and it really sparked the conversation. I was like a consultant that night. Some asked me for advice and all. See, that's one of the reasons why I was able to get along with your family. You big... No, it can't be true. I don't believe any of this. Oh, well, that's too bad. If you don't want to believe it, so be it. I didn't want to, but I will let John know of our conversations. I don't think I can tolerate you calling me a pig any longer anyway. Everyone is out of their minds. Why does everyone have your back? Why am I the one getting scolded? I heard you got told off by some of your family. What did you expect after being so disrespectful to me? Just because you're my mother-in-law doesn't give you the right to say things like that. How the hell did you trick everyone to like you? You just got married to John. You're new. Oh, did I never tell you? I am really talented at that. I'm very likable. It's important for me to be able to build a good relationship with people. Not only for work, but also for my personal life. I'm quite proud to say this skill helped me to become a director regardless of my young age. I was even told that I should be begging you for forgiveness. How can this be? Wow, I guess I really am loved. John was furious about all you had to say to me. From my perspective, it's very sweet of someone to become so emotional for me. Everyone is a traitor. When I first joined the family, everyone was nice to me. They treated me so well, saying how glad they were to see such a pretty bride. Yes, but you have an ugly personality. And people get used to seeing a pretty face after a while. Who are you calling ugly? Someone as ugly as you can call someone else ugly. You know, people try to avoid something unattractive. In my case, my personality made up for my unattractiveness. So I always had people around me. In your case, though, your face wasn't enough to make up for your personality. That's why no one is around you anymore. That's how ugly your personality is. Shut your mouth, you pig. John is very disappointed in you. He said he didn't want to contact you anymore, or even see you. What? He can't cut me loose like that. You don't mean he's leaving his old mother. Honestly, we both don't want anything to do with you. It's so unfortunate. All your family are so nice. How did you end up like that? Don't talk to me like you know better. I will not take that from you. See, that's what I mean by ugly personality. You think you can say anything just because you're pretty? Well, you should know. Life is not that easy. Are you scolding me? A petty girl like you? 
You may be older, but clearly I am much more aware of how the world works. You should feel ashamed you are getting scolded by someone younger than you. I hope one day your heart and face balances out. Grace was not able to redeem herself from her bad reputation in the family. On the contrary, John and I became even closer with the other family members. Grace couldn't stand it, so she stopped contacting everyone. Hoping that somebody would worry and eventually call her. But no one did. Grace became desperate and wrote a letter to John, claiming he should be worried about her. The only way she could contact him was through a letter because he was ignoring all her messages. But that letter too was torn and thrown away by John. Soon after, our address changed, so we stopped receiving letters. Recently, most of our family has forgotten about Grace. And I am living happily with John.